Let us delve into the world of monotonic stacks, a data structure that can help us solve problems efficiently. We will learn how to use stacks to solve problems in an optimized manner. So what exactly is a monotonic stack? A monotonic stack is a stack whose elements are always in either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing order from top to bottom. This property is maintained as elements are pushed onto and popped from the stack. This slide shows two types of monotonic stacks. First, a monotonically increasing stack, where elements are arranged in ascending order. As you go up the stack, each element is greater than or equal to the one below it, such as 2, 4, and 7. Second, a monotonically decreasing stack, where elements are arranged in descending order. As you move up the stack, each element is less than or equal to the one below it, such as 9, 6, and 3. The key to using monotonic stacks effectively is to maintain this monotonic property during all stack operations. When pushing a new element, you might need to pop existing elements to ensure the stack remains monotonic. Now let's explore how a monotonic stack actually works. When pushing a new element, you first compare it with the element at the top of the stack. For an increasing stack, you pop elements from the top until the top element is smaller than the new element you are trying to push. This ensures that the stack maintains its increasing order. Conversely, for a decreasing stack, you pop elements until the top element is larger than the new element, maintaining the decreasing order. After popping the necessary elements, you push the new element onto the stack. This process ensures that the stack remains monotonic. Let's illustrate this with an example array, 3, 1, 4, 2, and 5. To build a monotonically increasing stack, we start by pushing 3. Then, when we encounter 1, we pop 3 because 1 is less than 3, and then push 1. Next, we push 4 as 4 is greater than 1. When we encounter 2, we pop 4 since 2 is less than 4, and then push 2. Finally, we push 5 as 5 is greater than 2. This results in a monotonically increasing stack. The same process applies to a monotonically decreasing stack, but with the opposite comparison. Monotonic stacks are useful in solving a variety of problems. A classic application is finding the next greater element for each element in an array. You can also find the next smaller element using monotonic stacks. Another common problem is determining the largest rectangle in a histogram. Monotonic stacks can also be used to compute how much rainwater can be trapped between bars in an elevation map. These are just a few examples, but they demonstrate the versatility of monotonic stacks in solving array-related problems. Let's walk through how to solve the next greater element problem using a monotonic stack. Given an array, the goal is to find the next greater element for each element. For example, with the input array for 5, 2, 10, 8, the output would be 5, 10, 10, negative 1, negative 1. This is because 5 is the next greater element for 4, 10 is the next greater element for both 5 and 2, and there are no greater elements for 10 and 8, so we use negative 1. A decreasing monotonic stack helps track potential next greater candidates. Here's the Python code to solve this problem. First, initialize a result array with negative 1 for each element. Create an empty stack. Iterate through the input array. While the stack is not empty and the current element is greater than the element at the index on top of the stack, pop the index from the stack and update the result array with the current element as the next greater element for that index. Append the current index to the stack. Finally, return the result array. Next, let's tackle the largest rectangle in histogram problem. Given an array of non-negative integers representing bar heights in a histogram, the task is to find the area of the largest rectangle that can be formed. For example, if the input is 2, 1, 5, 6, 2, 3, the output is 10, corresponding to a rectangle of height 5 and width 2. The key insight here is to use an increasing monotonic stack to find the boundaries of each rectangle. Start by creating an increasing stack. As you iterate through the histogram, maintain the stack such that it contains indices of bars in increasing order. When you encounter a bar that is shorter than the bar at the top of the stack, it means you've found the right boundary for the rectangle formed by the bar at the top of the stack. 
Pop the stack and calculate the area of the rectangle using the current index as the right boundary and the index in the stack as the left boundary. The height of the rectangle is the height of the popped bar. The largest rectangle is highlighted with height 5 and width 2, giving an area of 10. Now let's explore how to solve the trapping rainwater problem using a monotonic stack. Given an array of non-negative integers representing an elevation map, where each bar has a width of 1, the task is to compute how much water can be trapped after it rains. For example, if the input array is 01021013212121, the output is 6 units of water. A monotonic stack helps find valleys where water can be trapped. The key is to use a decreasing monotonic stack to track potential left and right boundaries for trapped water. This example shows that a single unit of water trapped at indices 2, 6, and 10, and two units of water at index 3, summing up to 6 units of water. By maintaining a stack of decreasing heights, you can identify the boundaries and calculate the amount of trapped water. Now let's look at the Python code for both a monotonically increasing stack and a monotonically decreasing stack. The monotonic increasing stack function takes an array as input and returns a list of stacks showing the state of the stack after each element is processed. For each number in the input array, it pops elements from the stack that are greater than the current number to maintain the increasing order. Then, it appends the current number to the stack and adds a copy of the stack to the result list. The monotonic decreasing stack function follows a similar approach, but pops elements that are smaller than the current number to maintain a decreasing order. These functions provide a clear and concise way to implement monotonic stacks in Python. Let's discuss the time and space complexity of using monotonic stacks. For time complexity, each element is pushed and popped at most once, resulting in an amortized order of end time complexity. Each push and pop operation takes constant time in a stack data structure, contributing to the overall efficiency. For space complexity, in the worst case, all elements might be stored in the stack, such as with a sorted array, resulting in an order of end space complexity. However, in some problems, we only use the stack for computation and output a separate result array, keeping the space complexity constant. Let's summarize what we've learned about monotonic stacks and discuss some best practices. Monotonic stacks maintain strictly increasing or decreasing order. They are optimal for finding the next or previous greater or smaller elements in an array. The time complexity is order of n, as each element is processed at most twice, providing a linear time solution for problems that might otherwise require an order of n squared approach. Some of the best practices are that you should identify if the problem involves finding the nearest larger or smaller element. Decide whether to use an increasing or decreasing stack based on the problem requirements. Consider storing indices instead of values for position-dependent problems. Also check for edge cases like empty arrays or arrays with duplicate elements. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit CodeLucky.com for more such useful content.